Today's modern electronics have helped make our boating experience safer and more pleasurable. One piece of equipment that's definitely an asset for most coastal cruisers is radar. Radar gives you the ability to see through fog. It also helps you see through rain and other weather systems. You can pick out marks and other vessels a much longer distance off than you could see with your naked eye. I'm Captain Wayne Canning, Master Boat Builder and Marine Surveyor. Today we're aboard a Lagoon 38 sailing catamaran. We're going to be installing a Garmin radar system with an 18 inch antenna. By far the most difficult part of this project is going to be installing the antenna on the mast. We'll be about halfway up the mast just above the spreaders where the antenna will be protected from the sails and rigging. This project becomes a bit difficult because we have to climb up the mast to do this. It's simply not practical to take the mast down for this project. So we're going to be spending a lot of time working aloft, drilling holes, and mounting equipment. Normally the hardest part of any project like this is going to be running the wires. And that's certainly true in this case because we have to first run the wire down the mast, through a tube, and then through the boat. Generally speaking, I like to start the hardest part of the project first. So the first step we're going to do is go up the mast, determine the best way to run the wires down the mast, see if there's any tubes in the mast, or see if we have to drill a hole in the mast in order to run the wire down. This is going to involve several trips up and down the mast. The rig I use for climbing up and down the mast is this um, rock climbing harness that I will be putting on and then I use a ascender for going on the line coming up the mast and I have this uh, foot strap to help me climb up and when coming down I will transfer onto uh, this descender which is a bit like repelling. In order to do all this I'm going to uh, hoist my own rope up the mast so that I don't damage the owner's halyards with the equipment. Also, this rope is designed specifically for climbing and works better with all of this gear. The owner has purchased this Sea View aluminum bracket for mounting the antenna. And as you can see, we also have these cables that are going to have to go down the antenna. <clears throat> Over here, you'll see I have a um, heavy duty string with a lead fish weight that we can drop down the mast. This will help give us a uh, string to pull the wires down and through the mast. Okay, before pulling the cables, I'm going to prepare them by taping them all together so that I can pull them all down in one bundle. I'm going to tape, start leaving the, the large end to go down first, followed by the smaller ones. I'm just going to use a little bit of good quality electrical tape. I like Scotch 33 Plus myself. And I'll just tape that up fairly good. Come back a little bit. We want to make sure that they don't come loose coming down the mast. And then at the end of the tape, I'm not just going to pull that down. I'm going to fold that over and then leave that like that. That way when it comes time to uh, untape these, I'll have a little tab and I'll just be able to pull it off relatively easily. Here I am climbing the mast. You can see it's a fairly simple procedure. Basically I just sit down, pull my feet up, and then stand up. Once I'm standing I pull my ascender up with me and sit down again and then pull my feet up again. So basically I'm just walking on up the mast. It's fairly easy to do, surprisingly easily actually. You can also see that I've already pulled my tool bag up ahead of me so I'll be ready to work when I get to the top. Once in position, working with the climbing harness on is fairly easy. It, it holds pretty firmly around the waist and around the legs, so you don't have to worry about falling backwards out of it or anything. Also, with the foot straps, um, it allows you to use your legs to stand up if need be or get a better grip on things. Using a hole saw, I've enlarged the hole in the mast, and now we're about ready to uh, to push the wire through. We wanted to make sure we didn't damage the wires all the way going through there. And I've laced this up with this pull string. I have 
I've taped over the string to hold it firmly in place. And now it's time to start feeding the wire. Here we can see that I have this plate that covers the hole. And what I've done is cut a slot in it rather than one bigger hole. And that allows me to uh, leave a smaller hole that I can caulk up when, when we're finally done. So the next step here will be to go ahead and mount the, uh, the uh, radar bracket and then the radar dome. And then we'll finish up with the wire. Coming down the mast with the descender is fairly easy. I just squeeze the handle and down I come. If I let go of the handle, I stop. The harder I squeeze the handle, the faster I'll come down. So it's easy to control yourself. In order to pull the wires through the mast, what I've done is gone aloft and I've dropped a string with a uh, fish weight down inside of the mast. There's a tube up inside of this assembly, which you really can't see from here. But the weight fell down and landed inside the base of the mast. And what I had to do is I, the tube's not big enough to get your hand in there in order to reach it. So I took a coat hanger bent, I slid that up in the tube, and I rotated that around until I snagged the string and then was able to pull that back down through. Took a couple of tries, but it wasn't all that difficult. This bracket's come with a bunch of these um, little bushings as you can see, that uh, nylon bushings that go in here. But as you can see, they just kind of fall right out of there. So the problem is going to be when I'm up on the mast trying to um, put this all together, it's going to be near about impossible to hold all these things together. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of silicone and dab it on there. And then I'm going to set them in there with that silicone. That way when it comes time to uh, mount this thing, these things will be held in place by the silicone and I won't have to try to hold them all in place while holding on to the mast. And if I drop one from the top of the mast, you know for sure it's going to go straight overboard. Here we can see I've got the holes drilled for the bracket. I mounted it just above the uh, the forward strut on the springs. I've got a couple of pop rivets stuck in there, and I've uh, gone ahead and mounted it on the other side. So I'll put these pop rivets in. There's this one that, of course, is behind the bracket, so I'm going to have to take the bolt out and swing the bracket out of the way to drill that one. But uh, other than that, it's just a matter of drilling the holes, the pop rivets in, and tighten them up they break off and uh, moving on. And now it's time to break off the rivets. 
Those stainless steel rivets were surprisingly difficult to break, but with the right tool and a little bit of patience, it wasn't too bad. Now it's time to go ahead and hoist up the radar antenna or scanner. Although not really heavy, it's a rather bulky item and hard to get a grip on, so this procedure was a little bit tricky and a little bit uh, cumbersome. But with a little bit of patience and taking my time, it wasn't too bad. And finally, it's time to connect the wires and tighten up the bolts on the bottom of the unit so that it doesn't fall off. Once we've got all that done, it'll be time to head down and start pulling wires through the boat. You can see the wires come down through here and then we need to pass through the bulkhead. And we've got these two grommets here, and I think what I'm going to do is, before I take this out, drill a hole in the grommet, about a half inch hole, and then I'll slit it so that I can run the wires, the bigger um, end of the wires through there, the bigger the, the plug end, and then just slip it in there, and then I don't have a giant hole left over. And I'll seal these up with some silicone. I'll probably also go ahead and clean some of this up here as, while I'm in here, because I hate to see wires laying around like this. wires are clear of everything and then we'll slip them through. Don't want to leave loose wires hanging around inside of an anchor locker. Okay, that kind of cleans that up into a fairly nice bundle. That little stuff up there. tie here secured here once upon a time so I think we'll tie these up here about like that let's see if we got a little slack here and pull it out if we need to all right I had 
Oh, well, this seems to be one. I've driven a hole here. So, I'll take this uh, wire tie clip and we'll go ahead and screw it on there. And this will help hold those wires up out of the way. And as we now can see, that prevents presents a much neater bundle to keep that stuff out of the way. I'll add another wire tie down here. Can't ever use too many wire ties. See how much better that looks than it did before. We've got the wires pulled through the bulkhead and coming into the next compartment as we can see here. What we have to do now is run the wires through this plastic tube. Fortunately we're lucky enough to have a tube here in order to run the wires up to the electrical panel. And as you can see um, the owner has run a string through the tube. So what we're going to do is use this string to pull our wires through. We'll also pull an extra string with us so that we can pull this string back through and leave it for the next person who may have to pull wires through here. We have a relatively large plug to pull through this. We could cut the plug off and re-splice another one on, but I'm going to try to work with what we've got here and um, not resort to, pulling that, to cutting that plug off. So what I've done is I've gotten this um, wire pulling tool from uh, Lowe's, but most uh, large building supply places will sell these. It's sort of the old uh, Chinese handcuff type thing being a, a weave and the harder you pull on it the tighter it pulls on the cable. It also gives us kind of a cone shape here to help protect it from snagging on anything. So this will give us something good to pull on. We'll tape this up um, on this end and I'll add a string to it so that uh, we can pull the string back through and leave the string in the tube. I've also taped over the, uh, the mesh part here to make it a little bit smoother and I've smeared a little bit of Vaseline right over these, uh, the, the hump here, the, the hard part, so that hopefully that'll help it slip through the tube a little bit better. Anything we can do to reduce friction as we pull this thing through will be of immense help. At this point we've got just the end of the wire stuck in the tube getting ready to pull it through with the string. This is going to be kind of a tight fit and hopefully we won't have too much trouble. You also want to make sure that you've got your excess wires and loop of wire free and clear of everything so that it doesn't loop around or snag on anything. Otherwise you'll just have to pull it back out and redo it. On this end of the tube back underneath the electrical panel we see we've got the string and we can start pulling on this to try to work the wires through. At this point it would help to have two people because what I have to do is go and pull the string for a little bit and I'll get about uh, 8 to 12 inches uh, pull through there then I have to come back up here and push the wires back into the tube. Then I have to go back down and, and pull on the other end. So it would really help to have somebody on this end feeding the wires in while another person on the other end pulls. Unfortunately I'm by myself this morning so I'll just have to uh, keep going back and forth until I get it. Patience pays. And this here is always the moment of great gratification when you see the end of the wire and the pole come through and you get everything coming out at once. It's always a good feeling when you've made it all the way through. Because the power wires and uh, data cable wires aren't long enough to make it all the way up to the uh, instrument that's going to be mounted up by the helm, we're going to have to splice the wires. We're not going to splice the data cable, we're just going to get an extension for that. I mean, typically we're going to have to order that, so uh, that'll be a couple of days before that gets here. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead 
and spliced the power cables and we've added a new ground while we were at it for the uh, nav light up at the uh, mast top. And go ahead and uh, strip these off. same length for consistency. Strip that. Now we're just going to use ordinary butt connectors. There's no reason to use the heat shrink type on these. Because this is going to be a dry location. If it gets wet in here, then the owner's in trouble. going to do also is leave a, a bit of a service loop right in this hatch here where these connectors are going to be. The reason for that is you don't want to uh, pull butt connectors up into an area where you can't see it. That way if there's ever a problem and you're doing troubleshooting, you want to see where any connections are. So we're just going to leave them right here where they're visible th through this panel. As can be seen, I've left a bit of a service loop here and you can see where the butt connectors are right there. I put a wire tie on either side of the butt connectors. That's to uh, take any strain off of them should uh, anyone pull on the wires or just even the weight of the wires. We just want to take the strain off of those butt connectors. So we've now got them going up. It's time to move up to the next level. From here we'll go ahead and pull the wires up through there where they'll come out back in back of the uh, electrical panel. Alright, what I've done is um, I, I got the panel, I marked the, I flipped it over and I marked each corner to give me the outside dimension. You can see those marks. I then measured inside how much I needed, marked that out, drilled four holes with a spade bit in order to cut it out and then cut it out with a saber saw. So now we're ready to mount that in there. Alright, there we go. The panel's installed, doesn't look too bad. And we're ready to start doing some wiring. In order to clear up this mess with these ground wires, I've come back and you can see I've added a ground bus bar. These are just wires floating overhead. I'll try to clear them out too. I've also added this fuse block for um, additional marine electronics so that we can eliminate some of these inline fuses that are just floating around all over the place. Try to neaten this up, clean it up, make it look a little bit better. All right, I got my bus bar in here. Got most of my grounds going over there. I've cleaned this up a little bit for the time being, taken a couple of wires off of here. And I've um, relocated my uh, main power supply so that they can share that on this bus bar here. So I'm getting power from the same source. And I've got my wire going up to the radar dome. So the next project is to go ahead and get the wire from the um, radar screen or the chart plotter, which is up on the bridge. and the owner has decided to mount it here. You can see he's got the bracket in there. What I'll have to do is enlarge this hole for the wire to go through and then run the wire. There's a hollow spot in here and we're going to run the wire in here. So we're going to go ahead and take down this overhead panel in order to get access back there. Let's start by drilling the hole. So basically, we've got everything done, all the wires run and everything, so we're, we're fairly much good to go on this project. You can see the new panel, and we've added in a little tag for the radar so we can power that up, and we're ready to test the system. 
Okay, we can see that the uh, owner has installed himself a bracket. He had this existing Garmin unit here and he's added this bracket on top so that he could install the Garmin radar unit. So we're basically all ready to go. And I'm not sure that can be seen, but I can touch the radar and hit the button and we're going to go into standby mode and hopefully this thing will work. All right, ready to transmit. So let's hit transmit, spinning up. And I'm not sure this is showing on the video. It says spinning up, so hopefully we will see something in a moment. And there we go. There is our radar image. All right, so we're good to go. Everything's done, everything works. Life is good. On to the next project. I've got hours of video I'm going to have to edit on this thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm it for you. Oh no, that's... No. Trust me, I've screwed up by far more than... Uh,